So this video picks up kind of abruptly where the last video ended. As I mentioned at the end of the last video, it was supposed to be one video, but it was just getting to be unwieldy, even by my long video standards. So let's get the 12 volt side done now. As I sit here, it's Thursday evening. It's been really hot last couple of days. So I'm doing work in the evenings again. The yard mechanic's gonna help me bring the batteries on board tomorrow, which means tonight, I really need to get everything ready to rip out the old lead acid batteries. This makes me really nervous because as soon as I cut out the old lead acid batteries tomorrow, gel batteries, whatever they are, I'm not gonna have lights, I'm not gonna have a fridge, and I'm not gonna have a bilge pump. Ugh. Ugh. I'm really nervous, I'm rambling, let's just get to work. One of the things I'm doing is I'm making plastic bags out of filters, hoses, and now impellers and whatnot. And I'm putting them down here for the trip home so that if something lets go on the trip home, I have an idea of where to look for parts. That space isn't really useful for anything else anyway. All right, first task is to find a home for this and the table. Studio lighting that is not. Why did I pronounce studio like that? Like this reminds me in case I forget next time. It's back in there. I don't even know what half these screws are for anymore. But I know if I throw them out, I'll find out right away. Let me, seeing as this is clear for the first time in forever, actually clean that up. Never really got into the habit of using these clean wipes, but I find the Americans down here really love them and I'd be lying if I said they weren't convenient. As I get the boat closer and closer to being ready to get home, I'm gonna be throwing a lot of stuff out and packing things away for the trip home and I'm actually gonna be able to clean up the boat and I am so excited. The idea of having a boat that I can actually use and isn't just a construction site. What a concept. Now, let's get this panel off. I think I mentioned that there's the uh, gas lines that go to and from the compressor. I checked after I turned off the camera yesterday and it doesn't seem like they're attached to the big flat board. So I'm gonna unscrew the big flat board and then lift it up very gently and see if it feels like anything's attached. I really don't wanna break those and lose whatever refrigerant's in it. I have no One of my neighbors on the slip was saying that uh, there's a submarine out there. They were out going around Kent Island and they were able to sit there and watch it. It's Canadian, that's not something I'd ever cross my mind. Uh, are you hanging? No, I don't think you're hanging off this board. I should probably do the more inaccessible ones and do the most accessible ones after. I'm actually kind of excited to see what's under here. Excited and mildly scared. Really hoping there's no surprises waiting for me. Last one. This should be liberated now. Where the hell am I gonna put it on the boat? I have no freaking clue. But that's not this moment's problem. Okay, it's getting caught on the lip of this. Okay, that is being held down. Oh, I think this goes over this. Yes. This covering board and the covering board back there were put on after this was put down, as was this rail. And I don't want to knock the bungs out. I'm gonna stand in the middle and see if I can lift it straight up and give it a bit of a bow. Damn it. It feels like it's being held back there. All right, I have an idea. I wanna do the least amount of damage to liberate this. If I can put a bit of a slope under this, like a ramp, 
I really wish I had my chisel. If I had my chisel, I would just run it in this way, but I didn't bring it on this trip. I need more light to stay right there. Perfect. I'm just trying to put a bevel on the bottom of this. All right. It's probably not enough, but I want to take as little as I can. So let's give this another try. Need to get a bit more out of there. Carpet knife is not a chisel. This is going to be hidden by the cushion anyway, so even if I kind of make a little bit of a mess out of this, it's not the end of the world. These sides, it's not exactly like this is a super fancy classic boat. I mean, I love her, but let's be honest. Really doubt that's enough, but again, a little bit of time and holy fuck, it's hot. <sighs> Alright, that did a modest amount of damage. Don't fall back in. Don't fall back in. Okay, why are you stuck at the back? You're not glued at the back, are you? There we go. All right. This was clearly installed before everything else was put in. How am I gonna get this out? I'm no mathematician. Oh, that's why, I don't know if you can see the screw back there. That's why it wouldn't come out. I had to rip the screws out, okay. This is not coming out in one piece. The question then becomes, can I tilt this up enough to give me working space so I don't have to cut it out? So I'd really rather not damage this if I can avoid it. I'm gonna destroy that corner. How am I gonna do this? That corner is about to get smashed. I got the gas lines over there I don't wanna muck up. What can I do? What can I do? I don't know if you can see, but it's fallen down in the back and it's caught in that corner. So I can't lift it up any further and I can't lift that corner up to get it back on the ledge. Part of me is thinking I should just split this board down the middle. I can patch it and that'll make it easier to pull apart in the future as well. So I can see, hopefully it's not flashing it out, but you see that line right there? That sits on top of that. So I need to somehow get that line up onto this side and that'll give me a mark for cutting. And there's a lot of space here. Wow, what a lot of wasted space or space that can be more optimally used. I need to figure out now how to transcribe that. Do I have a square with me? Okay, don't, please don't break. Okay, you sit right there. I got an idea. No, I don't have a square with me. Damn it. I'm working around batteries, so I'm gonna use plastic. Hundred and fifty eight millimeters puts me pretty much to the center. Yeah, hundred and fifty eight. So if I use this as an edge and I come in this way, hundred and fifty eight to get two marks and then try to square that off, that's probably gonna be my best chance. Will it be perfect? Nope. But this is gonna be hidden by a cushion, so even if I cock it up, it's not the end of the world. I do have my multi-tool with me. I could cut straight up and through like that. Okay, I need to think, I need to think, I need to think. So that is the mark I just transcribed. 158, I should put the next line right here. I should put it right over there. This is not a long enough straight edge to make me happy, but I don't have a lot to work with right now. I'm gonna try to come in from underneath back here because I don't really trust that line I scrum I struck All right. oh 
Oh, that was hard on the ears. Okay, I'm actually not too far off from my line. There we go. Do you like my necklace? The other problem I have is that as I cut through this, at some point it's just gonna go funk and fall apart. I have no idea how to cleanly do this. This will save my ears, but take me a long time. I wonder if it would be easier. Okay, when they're talking about boat yoga, this isn't usually what they mean. I need to put this down. I'm losing my strength. A straight line, this is not. This is not. I wouldn't even call this woodworking. This is wood mutilation. I'm trying to get her done at this point. I'm really tired. Oop. Alright, I think I got it. There we go. Uh, kind of on the line. Here we go. Probably made a dog's breakfast on the underside. Nothing I can't make pretty when I get home. This has got so much potential for reworking. If you recall, I was stressing about the battery box pinching up here. Look how much space I have here. Now that that's gone, I can bring it all the way back. And if that's not enough, I can bring this whole bulkhead forward if I really needed to. So it's just tabbed in to that fiberglass shell. So whatever screws are used here, I'm sure they didn't drill fill drill. I don't, so I don't think it's going into the core. I think this is an insert. In fact, I know it's an insert because I can see below it over there. Oh my gosh, I'm glad I waited until dark. If I'm this hot and sweaty at night, I would have been murdered during the day. So now I need to start figuring out which wires go where and for what. Oh, there's so much room here for improvements. This is awesome. Okay, so that's main pack negative. That's main pack positive. What I don't understand is why there's two AC cables going in there. I understand there's this big data cable that's probably going to the hut screen up there. So the current plan is to mount the uh, MultiPlus Compact on an angle right here, exactly like this is, and hopefully just pick up the same wires. I wonder if I can actually crack this open and steal these wires. This is lower priority. If I don't get this back up tomorrow after I cut the power, I don't care. I've got uh, power from shore right now, so I really don't need the inverter. So let's get back to focusing on this. So this is the positive and the negative and this is coming so this is the main negative okay this here is the negative going to the heart interface this negative is the starter battery oh that's been yanked on oh i'm extra glad i'm replacing these now that looks like that battery has been damaged so there's the main positive that comes up to this battery on off I've never looked into battery joiners before. I'm not sure how they work. All right, what's this wire? Is that the uh, starter? Okay, so that's the starter wire. I passed me marked it. This is the combiner that comes to here. This is the old solar, solar charge controller. It's coming out period and not going back. That has probably something to do with the alternator. Where does this negative go? Oh, that's the main bonding wire. So that bonds all of the grounds to the engine and then the engine to the water through the prop. Okay, I can rip a lot of this stuff out. I'm gonna have to disconnect from shore power while I do this as well. <laughs> Lit from below. I think that's enough for tonight. I may not be able to film installing the batteries. I've never asked Joe if he's okay with on camera and the fact that he's helping me as a favor, I'm kind of reluctant to even ask him. So probably when you come back, the batteries will be installed and everything is going to be disconnected. And I will bring you in as I start to figure all that stuff out. For me, I'll see you tomorrow. For you, <laughs> I'm shiny. I have no power in the boat whatsoever. No 12 volt, no 120 volt, nothing. 
I'm just gonna start raining in a couple of hours and I have a lot of old wiring to rip out. So I'm gonna try to record as much of it as I can and show you what I'm doing along the way. I apologize if I seem to be a little bit rushed and not explaining as much. My priority right now is to get the power back on, at least the 12 volt side. What I've done so far the, before I started the camera is to make space here, I got these batteries out. I pulled the wires and it went, well, that's the engine grounding wire. So I'm gonna be using that again. But all of the old wires have been ripped off and thrown up there. A bunch of them were not tinned. So obviously not built to, or cut to standard. Cut to standard? Whatever, I'm tired. So what I need to do now is just liberate as much of this as I possibly can and try to get my 12 volt back up and running. I'm gonna focus on this side first, clear this area up, and then I'll start worrying about that side. I never did figure out what this is for. I'm sure this is gonna screw up my alternator at some point. I should probably take some pictures of this, even though I don't plan to put it back together, just in case I need to. So these wires are going to be useful for something because they've got fuses in them. Where did you go? These are the two I repaired before I realized they were for the solar charger. So I definitely, yeah, these went to the same ring terminal. I think that might've been a temperature sensor or something, but why would there be a fuse? Okay, well, whatever. Priority is not to understand what was. The priority is to make the angry pixies flow again. Oh, there's a plug at the back of the boat where the solar panels used to plug in. I bet you that's what uh, these went to. <sighs> Cruising equipment. I'm really worried this has something to do with the alternator. I mean, this is a shunned. Okay, I don't have time to sort all this out. The alternator can be sorted out after I've got electricity back. This has that lock that's easy to break and I'm probably gonna end up pulling this back. So I'm gonna tape it in case I need it for the alternator. I don't wanna break that off. Okay, so this, to be safe, even though I've unplugged the shore power, killed all the breakers, I still decided to tape up the positive cables just in the off chance something gets turned back on. Y'all know I've had enough oopses. I don't need any more. That is the positive. Yeah, because that's the negative. Yeah, that's the positive. Okay, so that's what this is. That's the positive for the heart interface. You know what? I don't need the battery combiner anymore. So I don't know how the battery combiner works. It looks like it's digital signal, so I don't know why the switch is so chunky. But and I disconnect all that as well. Let's stay focused down here, one thing at a time. Let's get that shunt off. That is an abomination. Now I'm into stuff that's back there. So let's get this one off and then I can get this wire out and that clears out all the wires on this side that I can get at. Oh, I gotta take both sides off to get the fuse out. So the lugs are behind it, which makes sense. That fuse holder will definitely live on. While I'm in here, let's get the battery combiner off. Crossed. This was going to the starter battery. So I'm hoping that goes to the starter motor. It's uh, it's real stiff. It's real stiff indeed. Well, anyways, I'll sort that out when I can get to the back. That's an engine ground. I cannot believe I got that on the first try.
that was uh, quite packed. Nope, come back here. In case I decide to reuse this, that top one was going to the inverter, but I'm gonna try to use bus bars. I don't know what those uh, yellow with red stripe wires are. It could be a while before I get my batteries online and I need to salvage my light as, or save my light as much as I can. Just says F1 and F2. Field, oh, it's a blue C. Okay, I can look up what the details are. Normally I'd be taking my time to figure out all of these things before I pull them apart, but... So given that it's gonna start raining, I'm gonna switch over and work on the lazarette area now. Oh yeah, she's gonna start raining soon. And of course I forgot to bring a light. So I've got another shunt here. Oh! These wires go to the starter solenoid. So this is gonna be alternator stuff. I'm gonna to have to sort out later. That's an alternator negative. Okay, that's an alternator wire. That goes to the shunt. Okay, I think I'm starting to figure this out. So some kind folks mentioned that this has something to do with the alternator regulator, which makes sense. I think it makes sense. Yeah, because these wires here go to this shunt. And this shunt, that, goes to the alternator and that also kind of makes me worried because this wire went to that circuit board that i took out i'm gonna have to figure out what all that is after i am going to liberate as much wire as i possibly can also that's coming out today too i really hope some of this is usable footage all right so i just took the air filter off oh that, what the f Okay, that's probably the tachometer, and a bunch of this is all going to the alternator. So somehow, oh God, I'm gonna be figuring out what this alternator is, aren't I? But none of this is important for getting the house back online, so I can ignore this. Ah, okay, so that's the starter battery. That goes to the, so I can use that starter battery switch when I wire everything up in here. Sweet, okay, so now I know what that is. Oh, do I really want to mess with this or anything back here? I may not have a choice. Slow down, Maddie. Slow down. You're going to fuck up. You know, when I was a kid, I was very good at taking toys apart. I was not always very successful putting them back together. I'm not saying that for any particular reason right now. Nope, none at all. Sorry, I know you can only see the back of my head right now. See if we can figure out which breaker that is. Four from the top. One, two, three, four. Instrument lights. I have no idea why that went there. Let me tape that off because that's going to go live when that breaker gets turned back on. Right. Okay. I don't know what this is but it was disconnected before I got here. Okay, this goes to the ground bus. Put some tape on that as well. You know what, let's get that out. Oh, sorry, I bumped you. There she goes. Oh boy, that's what you call old school. Oh, that's the uh, radio wire, the radio extension, which I'm still using. So definitely want to take care of this. Oh, I still need to do an oil change. Now, which one of these is in and which one of these is out? It doesn't say. Oh shit, here's the rain. I could change the hatch or close the hatch. The rain is here. Normally, letting the lazarette hatch close is a very bad thing. Mine doesn't lock. I've got that bay open if I need to. If it starts to rain too, too hard, I'm closing the lazarette hatch. 
and I think I mentioned it, but I'll mention it again, shore power is physically unplugged from the boat. It's possible there's some power in the capacitor somewhere, but most devices have uh, bleed resistors that drain out the capacitors. So by now, it's been a couple of hours since I pulled the power to the boat. I should be relatively safe. Okay. All right. It looks like if I take a couple screws here out, the front panel will lift off and then hopefully I can see what those wires are. The reason I'm doing this and not just cutting the uh, wires is because I want to know which one was the input and which one was the output in case I need that information later. So that's ground. Okay, so this here is just a ground wire. All right, I can cut that. This is some sort of a control wire and I have no idea where it goes. Ignition. Ah, it's an ignition signal wire. That's a 12 volt wire. Which means I can probably use this for the DC-DC charger for the Renogy. Okay, so this is battery. Ooh, that's a big capacitor in there. That is the kind of capacitor that would give you a bad day. Line L1, neutral, ground. Ah, so that's the 120 volt input. Okay, so this is AC. Okay, with that, I can now take this out entirely. I think the rain has stopped. Yes, the rain has stopped, that's nice. That spot of rain actually made it feel a lot nicer. There's no way I'm getting the lights on before it's dark out. So this charger, I believe, is the one I just disconnected. Put all the screws for the breaker panels in there. Ow, oh, sakes. Uh, the longer this night goes on, the more I'm gonna cuss. Yep, that's the charger. It's one of the only red ones. I hope this doesn't cause any flickering on the camera. But I need to be able to see. Okay. I'll use that old charger circuit for the uh, multi-plus. That should be the end of the 110 side. So now the question becomes, where is the 12 volt coming in from the batteries? I'm guessing it's going to the... That's fine, I want that off anyway. Main four AUGS panel, because I've got this panel back here as well. I guess I might as well start pulling those now. Oh, this is going to be a long day. This is going to be a long day. I have no idea what these four are even for. Another reason I want to build this out to use up this space is that the space behind here, you might have seen before the tub for the bit or for the um, cockpit. Very, very, very little space to work with. As much as it's nice to have this little bit of space here, it's not worth trying to fight with all these wires. I'd rather build this box um, all the way across and put a put a drip tray here. So if any water comes in, it'll drip off. It's gonna be the main negative and the main positive. Oh, is it this one? Yes. And it connects to the main disconnect switch. At some point, I'm gonna get really frustrated and just turn off the camera and I'll, I'll, I'll beg your forgiveness. So that's the main breaker. I've got two wires going into the top, two going into the bottom, and I don't know which is which. I'm really sorry, I wanna record everything, but I've got almost no light left. All my lights are starting to run out of batteries. I just need to hunker down and do this. I will bring you back as soon as I've got cabin lights up. As soon as I can, I'll bring you back. Harsh lights, harsh lights. It works for, can I do that? There we go. <laughs> Very professional. It is 20, 20 after midnight, and I am ready to start turning things on, I think. Before I do, well, that's why I wanted to bring you back, so if anything goes spectacularly wrong, you'll get to see. 
But before I get started, let me show you what I did. I will say, it's pretty damn wild. I bought the cells for what was the first 48 battery, first 48, 48 volt battery, which is now the two batteries in the boat. I think it was almost two years ago. This is the first time they're ever gonna actually be used. I, uh, I really hope nothing goes wrong. I have uh, no voltage on the bus curve. Oh, I gotta tighten these down. Shit, okay, Woo. almost forgot. Oh, the dangers of working tired. I haven't shown you what I've done yet. I got the old heart interface out. Inverter AC out, inverter AC in. I know which is which for when I set up the MultiPlus. The old heart interface was here. That's now where the servo is. There's the two BMSs where the battery combiner switch used to be. Everything has been completely stripped out. Obviously, I'm not turning on the engine because the wires are laying everywhere. I've cut just about all of the zip ties. Oh shit, what's this? I need to figure out what that is. I'll worry about that in a minute. So there's the servo. There's the smart shunt. There's the negative from the two batteries. I originally was going to put the positive down there, but I really didn't like how close that was to all the negative gear. I'm worried that this is going to foul with the drawer, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay. This has a better chance of fouling with the drawers. I'll worry about that tomorrow. That Victron charger is not set up. MultiPlus isn't set up, just the batteries. I've connected the grounds that were here that used to go to the old shunt. Had the right size ring terminal to connect to this, which meant they were too big for this. So I just ran them here. Two ring terminals and one lug is fine. And they're on the far side. And then this shorts over to the ground bar. So there's the main engine ground. And there's some stray grounds that I've connected. I'm not entirely sure what they're for. All right, I'm gonna put this down, tighten these up and put the covers on them. I'm not torquing anything down to them. I just wanna get the lights and the fridge back on and the bilge pump. Pretty sure I've already tightened these down. But being tired, it doesn't hurt to check again. Before we start, this battery is off. Yes, it's tilted down. I tried to hold it down with that strap, but I need to shim under there. Right. And that battery's off. Okay, both batteries are off. BMS1 is reading 13.30. Let's turn its output off just to see if I've got the right one. Okay. Discharge off. Discharge off. Discharge on. Discharge one. Okay. Battery B is the engine bay. Now, let's uh, rename this 12 volt. B M S A quarter berth. Oh, it only did Q. All right, well, whatever. It's also 13.14 volts. Okay, so that's quarter berth. Let's go into this one, which is battery B. Rename it engine bay. Okay, that was too many letters. So I've got E and Q for engine and quarter berth. All right, we're going to light this one up first. Right now, the batteries are only powering the 12 volt circuit and the 12 volt circuit is leading to the shunt and the servo. Turning on this battery, it should do nothing on the boat. Okay, I see the shunt blinking. There's the servo. We should have, oh. Let's go into the quarter berth, turn the quarter berth on and the batteries will start balancing. Yes, I'm seeing transfer voltage. The batteries are balancing. So, all the AC breakers are off. Everything is off. Everything is here is off. Somehow the stereo got turned on. So everything there is off. That breaker is off. Everything here is off. And the pump is off. And just to be safe, I'm pulling the fuse. Everything on the 12 volt side should be dead now. There's a lot about this camera I love. The battery is not one of them. 
it shows full battery and goes to shutting off in less time than one recording session, which is like 28 minutes. I don't know how long the audio was crap for. I'm sorry. Where's the festivities gonna be if something goes wrong? I am sure some of my grounds are not connected, so some circuits won't work, but I'm also 99% sure this is the main bus. You know what? I'm turning these off. So one of the problems I'm worried about is this elbow gets really hot. So I'd like to bring as much through this as I can. Ow. Anything that can be brought through that slot can be kept up high. For tonight, I just, I wanna turn my lights on. I wanna turn my fridge on. I wanna turn my bilge pump on. Have I said that a few times already? If I did, that's because I've been saying it to myself non-stop for the last several hours trying not to give up no power okay let's turn this one on first Okay, no sparks, no drama, no sparks, no drama. Right. This is the uh, big test. Okay, that's on. Let's try cabin lights. Well, I've got that. Is it this one? Nope. All right, I'm missing the cabin light ground. Right, let's turn that back off. Fresh water pump. Oh my God, I've got water. What kind of current am I drawing? 79, 81, 45, seven. That was the first time anything real has run off the batteries I built. <laughs> I want to yell, but it's late and there might be people sleeping on other boats. Okay, fresh water pump, refrigerator. The compressor's on. The fridge is on. Oh my God. Okay. Um, Next one is bilge. Bilge is perhaps the single most important one. Not because I need it right now, but because if I do need it, I don't want to be fucking, or I don't want to be f flipping with it. Bilge is working. Okay, I don't have cabin lights, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, do I have my radio? I have my radio. Oh, wait. Did I have the wrong cabin lights? I have cabin lights. And the fans just turned on. Okay, maybe that's those lights. Okay, I have my incandescence. Turn that one on. Is that what gives me these lights? I have, oh my God. Oh my God. This boat is running off my own batteries. Pulling 100 watts. That's 10 amps. Let's go reconnect shore power and see if we get 120 volts. Off, 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 off. All breakers are off. Now, those wires, so no one's worried. The in and the out, I cut them to be clean. I put the morettes that were on them back on and I taped them. Shit, it's starting to rain. Let's do this uh, with careful haste. Okay, before I do anything else, let's do the pilot's berth, just simply because I can see. I had nothing. Let's turn that off. 
The charger's disconnected. Let's turn on those two outlets. I'm thinking my AC's not working because I would have expected my kettle to come on. No, I have no AC. Why do I not have AC? Was the AC only coming from the inverter? Okay, you know what? I have enough power easily to get me through the night. Oh, right, I have the bilge pump sent back to auto. There, now it's set back to auto. I have enough power for the fridge. Oh, fuck, I won't have a coffee in the... Oh my God, boo-hoo, poor me. You know what, let's just go take a quick look. When you're really fucking tired and you're really fucking stubborn. Starboard, port. Ugh. Let me get my meter. Oh, this because I'm soft and I want coffee in the morning. All right, I hope that's useful because with the rain coming, I can't take much longer. 119.6 volts. Okay, so I've got power at the main breaker. Where does the power go from the main breaker? Inverter in. Inverter out. So all of the 120, 110 volt on board goes through the uh, inverter. Okay, I have to get the multi plus up. Can I light that up tonight? I suppose the easiest way to light that up tonight would be to jump the uh, neutrals, grounds, and hots, but I need to think about the potential galvanic implications of that, and I'm not doing that tonight, and, and it, the rain's coming, so good night from the Lazarette. Now, let's see if we have AC.